Hello and welcome to my Lightroom macro editing tutorial. Today I'm going to take this raw file of this bee and I'm going to turn it into a photo like this while showing you every single step from the very start to the finished and fully edited picture. I spent the last couple of days shooting bees and I ended up with some really nice pictures but at the end I think this one is the best from all of them. It's really, you know, everything works together, the composition. Unfortunately though, the picture is not 100% sharp on the eye but it's still plenty of sharpness for a small print and for sure for online sharing. So what I'm gonna do here is first of all just erase the shadows and I'm doing that so I can bring the contrast to the right and really make the picture pop without losing too much of the shadow detail. So that looks pretty good and I'm also gonna bring down the highlights just to recover a lot of this highlight detail, especially in these white parts of the flowers. It's a pretty big difference. Then I think honestly with the overall exposure it's just a little bit too bright but around half a stop into the minus exposure will fix that. Then blacks, you know, I really don't want to have a very contrasty picture with a lot of dark shadows at all. So what I'm actually going to do is bring them up and maybe bring the contrast a little bit to the right to make the whole picture pop even more and by bringing the blacks to the right that allows me to do all of that without actually having two dark shadows. So from before to after already it's a little bit of a difference, definitely nothing major as of yet though. Then clarity, you know clarity is a very difficult thing here because minus clarity works really well in the flowers but plus clarity, I really don't like it very much here. So especially on the B, it just makes everything a little bit too harsh and it really doesn't work with something as delicate as a flower and a bee. So what I'm actually gonna do here is just leave the clarity at zero and grab an adjustment brush with some minus clarity and go over the background with these flowers to really just add a little bit more minus clarity, a little bit more mysteriousness and a little bit more softness in the background. So really not a big deal at all, but it does help a little bit. Then vibrant saturation, I'm actually gonna leave them alone as of yet because I wanna go down to the camera calibration and change the profile to camera landscape. And what this will do is make everything a lot more saturated, but at the same time, it also kind of changes the lighting scheme to something, it just works better in this particular picture. So this is definitely, you know, profiles is something you have to kind of play around with and it's really different with picture to picture. But in this particular photo, I've already tried it and I really like landscape the best. So I'm just gonna leave that here, but because it adds so much saturation, I might even go a little bit into the minus vibrance and minus saturation here to not make the picture look overdone. Then temperature of course is a very important thing and this is also quite difficult in this particular case because I like this very neutral look but I also like this kind of more warmish look. So I want the best of both worlds and I'm actually gonna go first of all with a relatively neutral look and also do the same thing with the tint make sure there's not really too much of any tint. So from before to after, it's quite a big of a difference, but I like it overall a lot better, but I still want, once again, a little bit of this warm tones. So what I'm gonna do is go to split toning, highlight, just open this box, and add a little bit of warmth in the highlight tones, maybe even mix that with a little bit of red tones, just something like that, and that really makes, that gives the picture a little bit of a color while at the same time having the overall color temperature relatively neutral. So here's before that split toning, here's after and if I disable the split toning here and just show you the color temperature at default, you see the color temperature itself just makes everything warm and it just doesn't look as differentiating and as interesting as it does with the split toning. So so split toning, absolutely great thing, definitely take advantage of that tool. 
So then, let's go up and the basic adjustments, I'm all done with those. Let's just quickly see from before the adjustments to after. So it's quite a big of a difference, I really like the tones and the overall dynamic. But at the same time, actually let me try to bring up the whites just a little bit to create even more dynamic from before to after. So then I'm gonna go down into the tonal curve and first of all just bring down the lights here to kind of recover even more of that highlight detail. So it might seem a little bit counterintuitive to you to go into the plus whites, go into the minus highlights, go here into the minus lights. But all of these things, uh, all of these four sliders right here, highlights, lights, and highlights and whites, even though they all adjust certain parts of the highlights in the picture, they all adjust it in a very different way. So you can really go minus with the one and go plus with the other and it will have a completely different effect and you kind of can mix those together to get the best of both worlds. So at the end, I really like to bring down the highlights just kind of for the broader area of the bright parts and then bring up the highlights to just make the very bright parts a little bit brighter. As you can see, as I move this around, it's really just the very bright parts that it affects and that way you get even more dynamic. So then in terms of the dark tones, once again, I don't really wanna make this too dark. I don't wanna make it too contrasty. So I might even, actually I don't think going into the plus dark works that well either. So I'm just gonna leave that at zero and the shadows. Maybe I'm actually gonna go down with the shadows a little bit because the shadows in the tonal curve really just affect the very dark shadows. And in this particular picture, really the only dark shadows that we have are within the B. So by bringing that down, it just increases the contrast within the B by a little bit. So at the end, here is before the tonal curve adjustments, here's after, it's just a little bit more refined and it definitely looks a lot better. Then I don't know how much time I want to spend with these very small adjustments, but what I'm actually gonna do is go down here to the camera calibration once again, where I change the profile from camera standard to camera landscape, and that already made a pretty big difference. But I just want to change some of these green tones, kind of make it look a bit different, maybe a little bit warmer and even go into the blues to also have uh, that change by a little bit. So these primary colors, it's really very different from picture to picture, so I couldn't really give you a uh, guideline to what you should do here, you really just play around with it, and at the end stick with whatever you like best. So I think that does the job here, just a little bit plus saturation in the blues, and here's before, here's after, that is before the primary colors and the camera profiles here. If I would just go to the standard profile, this would be the impact that the primary colors have. And you see, it's not too big of a difference, but it definitely looks a little bit better at the end. So I'm gonna go back to camera landscape here and go up to effects. By the way, I have the photo CC plan from Adobe right now, so I can actually use the dehaze tool and also use Photoshop, of course. So expect some Photoshop videos to come in the future. But anyways, I'm not gonna use any dehazing rights here. Instead, I just wanna add some vignetting by going into the minus amount and just bring the midpoint a bit more towards the center make the feather a bit smoother and just add some vignetting to get even more attention on this actual bee. Now with such a bright high key almost picture it really doesn't work if you add that much vignetting so just a little bit will do the best here and from before to after it's a little bit more of a difference and it definitely adds more attention to the actual center. And then just gonna go up into sharpening and I definitely want to add some sharpening that's by the way gonna be the last global adjustment as well and I really want to add quite a lot of sharpening so I'm definitely gonna zoom in here but even though it might look over sharpened because it is not fully in focus I'm not gonna print this very big anyways so what I'm just gonna do here is mainly look towards the overall sharpening while zoomed out 
and really go for the best looking effect right here. So around 120 sharpness is really a lot and more than I use in most of my pictures. But once again, it just works the best here. I'm still going to bring the mask into the right to make sure I don't have any of these non-textured surfaces and backgrounds selected because that would just introduce noise. And another little trick is to zoom in and just bring the color noise reduction to the right. In this particular picture, I'm also gonna do that by 100 and that will just get rid of the purple and green sensor noise. It's really a great slider, absolutely. You should use it, there's no bad effects whatsoever. If you can see here as I change it, it really doesn't change any of the other colors. It really just makes your picture look a lot cleaner. So then noise reduction, once again, because I don't want to print this in full resolution anyways, I don't think it's necessary that I add any noise reduction and if I just look at it zoomed out, it just makes the whole picture less clear, less crisp, less sharp. So um, there's not any need for that. Then let's actually see, I think that's pretty much it, maybe I'm just gonna just gonna change the saturation of the yellow tones and bring them up a little bit. Also the green tones, just a slight tad bit. And the luminance, maybe actually, eh, well, a little bit of the plus luminance within the greens. So here's the before the HSL tools, here's after. Really not that big of a difference, but it does change the picture a little bit. So then, let's actually see, in terms of the overall picture, here is before any editing, here is after, and you know, you see it's a lot more refined, a little bit more dynamic, and definitely a lot more crisp, but the big difference is definitely the color. So depending on your liking, you might even like the kind of warmish look a bit better, but I really like this contrast between the almost bluish leaves of these flowers to the yellows of the other flowers and of course the bee itself. But if you would want a little bit of a warmer picture, that's of course very easily done. But I'm gonna stick here and in terms of the once again low overall picture, I'm very happy with it but I want to crop it a bit down because down here we don't have that much space and up here it's really almost too much. So what I'm going to do is just crop it down a little bit to something like that and I think that works even better. Now I could of course also crop it from the right to remain the 3 to 2 aspect ratio, but I really don't think that's that big of a deal, because I also tried to kind of crop it uh, more towards the B, but I didn't really think to work it that well, because the flower and even the space on the right really helps the picture to give kind of a breathing room. So I'm just gonna leave it there, just crop it on the top and nothing else and go into the local adjustments. Now, I really don't think there's really too much needed in this particular photo in terms of the local adjustments. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly grab an adjustment brush and just kind of go over the B. Anyways, I'm gonna raise the shadow a little bit here, really nothing much. And let's actually see with the other adjustments. I don't really... Maybe I'm actually gonna go a little bit into the plus whites, just to make the bee itself a little bit more dynamic, a little bit brighter. And I do actually like that look. Then clarity, I don't think any plus nor minus clarity really works here. And blacks, maybe a little bit into the plus blacks and then add a bit of contrast and even bring the shadows up a bit more. So once again, not really anything in particular that I wanted to do here, just play around with the settings and at the end see if anything works better. And here is before, well actually let's just uh, select this very adjustment brush. Here is before that and here is after. It's just a little bit brighter, a little bit more dynamic. Hey guys, just a quick interception, after I finished the video and I looked at the picture for a while, I really thought that it was a bit too harsh, so I'm actually gonna go here into the minus clarity a bit and just make everything uh, seem a little bit smoother and I'm also gonna bring down some of that sharpening to make it not look as over sharpened. 
And also, I think the picture is maybe just a little bit too blue. So I'm gonna go here to the color temperature and just make it a hint warmer. And I really like this look a lot better. So here is before that adjustment that I've just done. It just seems a little bit too white and a little bit too blue almost and also too harsh. And afterwards, I think it works a lot better for the overall style of the picture. So let's actually scroll down here into the history and this is the raw file without any editing. And compared to the picture afterwards, it's really a lot flatter, there's not really anything going on. And especially the beat just kind of looks washed out. So this is the picture afterwards, after all of the adjustments, the real final picture, and I'm actually very happy with it. So let me know what you think of it in the comments down below. Also, you let me know whether you like these kind of 25 minute, very in-depth tutorials more, or if you would like to see me do more kind of eight to 10 minute videos, because that would of course be a lot easier and a lot less time consuming to watch, but at the same time, not quite as in-depth. So just leave me, you know, a comment with your preference there. Anyways, that's been it for today. Of course, as always, be sure to subscribe for more videos just like this one, Lightroom tutorials, Photoshop tutorials in the near future, and all sorts of photography videos. Anyways, take care, have a great day, and I hope to see you in the next episode.